hello hello let's try this again this is why we do these five minute checks right before actually going live this is a quick audio test making sure that the last minute change didn't uh, break anything too badly um, hopefully you can hear me okay I'm just gonna quickly check uh, YouTube and twitch streams I can hear myself on twitch so that's a, a bit of a delay um, and I can hear myself on YouTube as well so that's good I'm gonna have to turn off <laughs> that um, notification because that's quite loud but thanks for subscribing C Bailey film the one and only I'm not too sure why I heard that alert. I thought I turned that off, but that's okay. All right, so we've got about two minutes. Um, before we start, I'm going to take a quick water break and then be right back. All right, and we are back. It is 8 p.m. Eastern here in Massachusetts, and there's nothing exciting going on. That's a lie, there's this stream. And uh, what are we doing today, and why are we all gathered here, two of us on YouTube and four of us uh, on Twitch? Well, I want to practice with this setup that I've got in a casual fashion, hanging out with friends while modeling, which is something I've been enjoying quite a bit on Discord these past couple of weeks. Hello, Eckhart Troll on Twitch. Thanks for joining. Um, and so I figured that what best way to do that than to put myself in the position of modeling for an audience of 10 people six people and the internet in posterity all right so knowing that the audio is good and getting that introduction out of the way let's go ahead and get things started feel free to chime in either on the YouTube chat or on twitch chat or wherever you happen to be watching and I'll do my best to address any questions comments concerns or the like um, that out of the way Let's do this. So we're using Blender today. That's my tool of choice for my 3D modeling, rendering, and the like, at least for now. And um, what you see here is Zuzan, which is one of the primitives that comes with Blender. But um, as we would do with the default cube, um, which is this cube here, we're actually going to get rid of Suzan and everything else on the scene as by selecting all and deleting it. I actually should take this quick moment to turn on my screencast keys, um, but I don't have those, so I'm actually not gonna do that. Maybe next time. All right, and so what I wanted to do was import an image as reference, and we're actually going to use, uh, you won't be able to see this, I don't think, on stream, and that's fine and dandy, but 
um, I want to bring up an image of a speaker box that I took on a walk recently. Um, it's been one of the things that has kept me sane throughout these um, different times is going on walks and thanks to Blender I've been starting to see the world a bit differently. It kind of reminds me of my first uh, forays into photography a couple of years ago and the way that that opened up my eyes quite literally to the things around me. And so with all that stalling out of the way while I found this image, here's what we're working with today. Um, if you want to, for some reason, do this alongside me, uh, you are more than welcome to do that. And you can find this image on my Twitter, which you can see on my, on my, yeah, on this feed if you're watching. Uh, it's just my name. And I'm noticing that um, C. Bailey's comment here is getting cut out. So I'm going to really quickly try to fix that widget so that we can read everyone's comments in the chat box. Um, oh, it doesn't seem to be a clear way of doing that at the moment. This photo makes me miss America. Well, you can live vicariously through me. Uh, yes, America. And uh, if you don't know already, uh, this is Burger King. So I think we've just been effectively demonetized, but it's fine. I wasn't monetizing this anyway. Um, all right. And so I, I won't lie to you. I did try this out yesterday on a private stream. And by private, I just mean I didn't publicize it. And it worked out quite well. So I figured I would do it again just to keep things simple as I foray into this talking to myself or to a, a small group for hours on end. Um, and so one thing that I showcased there was this quite popular way of creating a geometry that's kind of been brought to limelight by the likes of Ian Hubert and other Blender users and 3D, 3D generalists, which is taking planes. Um, so effectively this image that exists within blender and this 3d world and essentially carving it out like you would with um a um i want to say origami but i don't think that's the right analogy to make here um so i'm blanking on that but uh let me just show you what i mean so if you're using Blender, or if you're curious as to how this works, you would hit tab to go into edit mode. And this allows us to select uh, the faces in this case, which is what we're interested in. And by hitting K, that's the knife tool, you can start drawing dots or lines around um, the image. This is effectively the same as using the pen tool in Photoshop or some other photo or image manipulation tools that you might be familiar with. And if not, that's okay. Um, and I'll roughly outline this image just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about and why I think that this is such a cool um, way of working and um, essentially just creating geometry from images. And let me tell you, this has been uh, probably the worst thing that's happened to my camera roll in recent years because now everything just becomes a reference image and something that I want to extrude later. So you saw me draw all those lines. I hit enter to lock them in. And now uh, I've created these faces on that plane that we brought in later. And something cool that I can do is hit E, that's to extrude, and bring it up on uh, what is here, I believe. That's the Y axis, yep. And so now I've effectively extruded that piece that we just outlined. Um, and create a geometry on that plane that takes the shape of that piece. And it looks a bit weird right now, but I can fix that by going into here and turning off show back face. And so now in a very rough manner, we can see the, um, yeah, we can just see that this piece has popped out essentially. And so this is what I meant earlier when I was talking about origami um, or just things unfolding. This is a uh, just a very quick and dirty way of getting some shapes out. And if I were to take this a step further, I could bring up a light, for
for example, if my computer will allow me to uh, like this point here, and we can't see this yet because I'm not in render view, but if I were in render view, then you can get the idea that this is now um, influencing the scene by creating shadows that weren't there before when it was just a plane. And I can prove that to you by uh, control Zing my way back to when this was just a plane back in the day and bring that point light back, placing it close to where it was, going back into rendered mode, and now it's just flat. So that's one way of doing this and of achieving um, this. But as you can probably tell, let me just quickly go back into flipped up mode here. Um, we'll run into some issues with that method, which uh, aren't all too bad depending on what your use case is. Um, but one of them being that this image has some perspective shifting. You can see around the edges here that um, you're not this is not essentially a flat surface. This is curved to some degree up here, uh, as well as down here, there's some curvature that you can see. And definitely around the edges, I believe that I took this with the widest. I wanna say it was, no, actually not the widest lens, but at a wider lens on my phone, which is an, uh, I have an iPhone um, that I used to take this photo and yeah, as most wide lenses do, there's, if not all wide lenses, there's some warping around the sides. And that's important to note because that means that if we wanted to extrude this, we wouldn't be getting sort of a one-to-one -one representation. Also, you know, just by nature of things being how they are, it's not perfectly flush on the surface. It's turned to us a bit. And so knowing that if we wanted to use this as a game asset or just to have a one-to-one -one representation. We can't really do that with the previous method, which is why we're going to go about this a bit differently. But before that, I'm gonna take a look at the comments and drink some water, because boy, do I need it. Nothing wrong with a good stress test. It's like a pop-out book, exactly. That's exactly it. All right, uh, confidence gum is now out of the mouth and we are cooking with grease so this is a reference image i kept trying to cut it um, because i didn't want to uh, sort of draw the spotlight onto this person's license plate but i guess i've now done that so sorry person and we'll just get started the way i did this yesterday and the way i would do this on any given day is by bringing in a cube by hitting shift a um, and then grabbing that cube and scaling it on the Z axis. Um, and we kind of, I, I wanna start with this box on the right here um, to get it into shape, to approximate at least the shape of this box with the cube that I've just used. And so we'll do that by scaling it on several axes. And if I rotate and break the illusion of this being flat, we'll start, we'll start to notice that the cube is not really doing what we would want it or expect it to. And that's because I'm isolating the scaling to specific axes, or I think that's how you would say it, um, I'll, um, from this view or from this perspective. And that's fine, because I can go back and sort of start moving it around and shaping it and molding it to better fit the actual shape of this um, billboard or cartelera. When I get nervous or when I'm tired or when I'm public speaking, I lose my English words and I can only think in Spanish. Um, so that's what I would call this in Spanish or, well, not I, what the Spanish speaking world <laughs> would call it. Um, so, you know, you won't just learn how to do things in Blender. Sometimes you'll learn whatever random things provide me comfort. Um, so with that said, uh, there's no need to be in look dev mode at the moment. And one thing that's kind of bugging me about this is that if I wanted to continue building on top of this, I'll soon start to uh, block out all the different components of these different uh, billboards and the speaker box that will help me approximate those shapes within Blender. Um, and so since we're mostly going to be using cubes, it's gonna start to look a bit cluttered and uh, I don't want that. So what's the secret I can hit this uh, Q 
key over here, which will bring me into wireframe mode. And at some point I'll set it up so that maybe I can zoom on my screen or my computer with a keyboard shortcut to the specific um, buttons that I'm hitting just so that you can follow along. But just know that I went into wireframe mode. One other way of doing this is by holding down the Z or Z key and uh, hovering over wireframe and that will uh, have the same effect. So pick your poison. This uh, essentially has the shape that we want and I also now know that it's about as flat as I would expect this box to be, maybe a little bit bigger. So I'll just scale it down just a bit more and go back into front view by hitting one. And we're gonna hit Shift D to duplicate. And this is where this process starts to get really interesting and really therapeutic at the same time. So with um, Shift D to duplicate, I'm now using a different cube. And the outline here, I'm not sure how well you can see it uh, on your end, but if I were to switch to the solid view, we now have a different cube. And we'll just start scaling this down to fit that piece. We'll go back into uh, the wireframe mode and just continue doing that for the rest of our lives, or at least this stream. And I'm just gonna continue scaling it and start roughly placing it where I would imagine this to be if this were actually fully flush against it. And every now and then you'll see me switch back to solid mode uh, just to make sure that I'm not forgetting anything or uh, essentially making any shapes or forms that weren't there to begin with or that don't really match up well with, um, with the piece that I'm trying to work on. And that's one of the really fun things about Blender is that obviously you can revisit this as many times or ways as you want. And something that I find myself doing with a couple of projects that I've devoted uh, what I consider a lot of time into, and this is sometimes just means that I've spent more than an hour on it, is that I'll revisit them at some point down the line and kind of tweak things that maybe I either didn't know how to fix at the time or just wasn't in the mood to spend too much time on. Um, so in some ways it's a really fun uh, sketch pad. We're also going to get this cheesy, melty, cheese tot uh, shape. Um, and I promise this will get a lot more interesting than just moving a bunch of cubes around while you listen to me blabber on. But we gotta do all this hard work first uh, to get that cool payoff. I'm gonna switch into rendered mode. Uh, nope, that's not what I meant to do. Wireframe mode. There we go. And I'm gonna take another moment here to read the comments. This is making me hungry. Yeah, I probably should have, yeah, I'm quite hungry too. All right, so far so good. We've got, for all intents and purposes, this box done. Uh, and if I wanted to quickly hide this reference image, we can see that this exists. Now within our 3D world, we can light it, we can tweak it as much as we want, but we won't get into that just yet. Whoa, giant uh, notification. Chris Tata 24 Thanks for, thanks for joining and thanks for following. Um, I have to figure out at some point how to <laughs> bring the volume down because uh, it is quite startling, but at the same time, it's pretty fun because obviously uh, it draws attention to the fact that people are uh, either enjoying or joining and that's, that's all good fun. Cheesy melty, yeah, love it. All right, so moving on, we're going to uh, shift you to duplicate that the way that we have been. We're just gonna keep keep making these shapes, keep plopping them down where we think they fit. We'll come back and tweak them later, it's fine. Shift D, uh, scale it on the Z axis, scale it down on the X axis. Fun fact about me, I've always, always had uh, trouble with the letter Z. I think it's too close to C uh, for my taste or my ear. And so when I was learning to speak English, um, well, part of it was that I did it by using a, a British English Spanish dictionary. And the other part of it was that it was just so much easier to refer to the letter Z as Z, the way that it's, um, well, originally and naturally said. And so 
I might change between those two during streams, uh, especially as we start off, just because it's more comfortable. Uh, my American friends think it's pretentious, and it makes me laugh a little bit that they would think that saying things the way that <laughs> they were uh, originally said is pretentious, but that's a story for another day. Right, Kareem? Kareem's not watching, but that's because I didn't tell him. But I will tell him later, and this bit will live on in posterity and prosperity. Love the little giant zombie. Yeah, he's quite big. I should scale him down, um, but it's not, you know, it's not something I'm going to toy with right now because I, I think all, th all, con all things considered, we're doing okay, and I don't want to break anything just yet. Um, C. Bailey says, I'm a Zed convert. Yes, I, I'm, I'm on the Zed train. And not just Zed, the, the DJ, but Zed generally. All right, so let's do a quick sanity check just so that I can prove to myself and to you that this exists in 3D space and that I'm not just drawing boxes around these things for my health. Shifty here. Um, and so something that happened last stream, which brings us to a crucial moment in this stream. All right, thanks so much for joining, C. Bailey. Uh, thanks for thanks for hanging out for a bit. Appreciate it. Enjoy your meeting. Um, and yeah, I'll try to keep up the uh, blender and chill streams. Um, I won't. I think I I envision, if I being honest, that I probably won't talk through all of them just because it takes a lot of social energy, and I honestly don't have a lot of that these days. But I will do them more often because. Um, at least yesterday was quite fun. So, um, oh yes, something that happened on yesterday's stream was that Blender crashed. So I'm gonna take this as an opportunity and a friendly reminder to always save your projects when you can. I'm gonna name this BK Speaker Box 2 because we already worked on one. And so that was my friendly reminder to save and your friendly reminder to drink some water. So if you haven't done that, Go ahead and do that because you know you need it. We're going to go back into wireframe mode and we're going to scale this down on the z-axis, x-axis. We've got it in about the right shape now uh, and I'm happy with that. We'll come back to it later and make this look so much better. Um, but look at that. It's been all of 25 minutes and we've already got the rough shape of this scene laid out. Um, Something we can do, we don't have to, uh, to approximate this even further, is take notice of these little details here, like these brackets that are holding this sign together. Um, and these clamps here, if I move this, you'll notice um, here, let's just drop this here for a moment. These clamps are also holding uh, this post to this one. Um, what does that say? 2,000 calories a day is used for general nutrition advice, but ca calorie needs vary. Um, yeah, that's true. We are working with these sort of antiquated ideas of what the calories and in calorie intake should be. Um, I'm glad that they kept that there, I guess. It seems a bit occluded from the main display, which, as we know, is all this other goodness between giant air quotes. But I digress. Let's just get those brackets going. So we'll scale this down a bit more. We'll shift D to duplicate. One other cool trick, if you don't know it already, is that you can hit S to scale and then hit any of, if you have a numeric num, um, numeric number pad, a numeric pad on your keyboard, uh, you can hit things like 0.2 and that will shrink it uh, by that amount. Now I don't know so don't quote me on this, if it's like 20% of the current size that it's um, scaling it by, but I imagine it's something like that. And this is one of those things is just to Google away. So eventually someday I will know it or, s or as it tends to happen in streams, somebody will let me know. And uh, I love that. So I'm happy with this. 
at the moment or in its current state. I think something I also worked on yesterday was just adding these brackets that seem to be holding the speaker box together. So why don't we do that? We'll take this sh shift uh, D to duplicate, move it where we want it on the X axis, scale it on the X axis as by hitting S and then X for the axis, then do the same but on the Z axis and it's about looks about right let's check wireframe mode okay no it's uh, it's actually totally off so that's fine we'll just approximate it shift D to duplicate drop it on the same side on the other side and we're done so now we get to the cool bit and uh, this uh, getting reaching this point took about the same amount of time uh, yesterday and so if I were doing this not talking it would be probably a lot faster so keep that in mind if you want to do this with your own projects um, I think today we'll run for about another half hour and then call it and revisit this on another stream um, so given that the two people that are here watching have already subscribed I am sure that uh, you'll get a notification for that when it does happen but if you happen to be watching this at some point in the future uh, and you haven't subscribed but you want to know when that next stream will be then I would consider hitting follow if you're watching on Twitch and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube because I will continue to do these um, since they they are quite a bit of fun and it's a good way of um, sharpening the blade and building community at the same time and I'm all about both of those things uh, I realized that I overlooked this these little brackets here so I'm gonna add those as well before we dig into the fun bits uh, we'll rotate this actually on the y-axis 90 degrees just so we can get that shape and I'll plop it down right about here this is actually a cylinder so I might end up using a cylinder instead for it um, but we'll come back to that. We'll just focus on this rightmost bit today. We're going to bring that image back real quick. And I'll do that by hitting Shift A, image, images is planes. Um, and you won't be able to see the images that I'm looking through, which is good for both me and you. But I will try to find this image. It's in a folder called reference and it's called speaker box. So now I'm going to rotate this on the x-axis 90 degrees so that we can see it it's facing us it's looking great uh, Eckhart Troll says scene blocking is so soothing to watch I definitely agree I think part of the reason why I am doing this is because I've just been inspired by so many of my friends and uh, colleagues and acquaintances who are doing something similar because um, it's, it's just so fun especially if you've got uh, you know a good group to, to banter with while you're doing it. So what I'm doing here is I'm just isolating just this one um, billboard, which is what we're going to be focusing on today. And in, in uh, upcoming streams, we'll focus on the rest of the scene so that we can have this asset out. And so something that someone asked me when I told them that I was going to be doing the stream was, or that I was working on rebuilding uh, essentially this, you know, billboard for this restaurant um, it's like why would you do that like what service th what purpose does it serve and to be honest with you it doesn't really have a purpose it's part of uh, the fun of the practice if I wanted to I imagine that uh, barring these very specific um, intellectual property graphics I could put this up on something like a turbo squid um, or obviously on Sketchfab for others to enjoy. And I might do that at the end of these streams once this is polished enough. Uh, but really, it's just a way for me to, to practice taking something from the real world, bringing it into the, uh, this well, still the real world, but the digital one. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and working on that. So something that is useful to do is to kind of focus on this for a moment and think about the different um, 
levels of complexity that obviously this real wor <laughs> physical world representation of this object has against its current digital clone. Um, specifically here, we're talking about, hey, what's up Andromeda lady? Thanks for joining. Uh, we're talking about the way that this is obviously tilted. So that's something that we'll take into account when we um, f sort of finish this scene, but not quite. Specifically, I'm talking about the shape of this light um, as well as the insetting of this specific uh, billboards or um, marquees. If, if you know the actual name of this thing in English, please let me know in the comments somewhere because um, I'd like to call it by its name, but I don't actually know what that is. Um, so moving on, uh, I'm going to quickly, it looks like Twitch crashed at least on my end. So let me make sure that that's not true for everyone that's watching on Twitch. Nope, seems good. So we'll keep rolling. All right. So yeah, I was talking about insetting and the shape of this specifically. So we're going to focus on those two things. Now, this seems to be a bit bigger than uh, here. Let me draw on this by using um, Blender's grease pencil, which you can do by uh, holding down the D button on your keypad and left clicking. That will allow you to draw. And this is really useful when you're trying to talk about specific things and something I overlooked earlier. And to delete, you hit D and you right click. Uh, so you sh uh, hold D to draw by using the left mouse click and hold D to delete the drawing by using the right mouse click. And that's a very useful way of pointing things out. So I'll start using that going forward. Um, all right, so yeah, we've got this bit that's jutting out quite a bit. So let's focus on that first. Enough banter. Let's go into solid mode just so I can get a better sense of it. Oh, let's save again. That's another water break reminder for you and a saving break for me. And let's start to get organized because we've got cubes zero through 26 here and that's starting to look like a mess and we don't want that. So we're going to hit M, which allows us to move this to a collection. We'll uh, create a new collection and call it speaker box um, because it will hold the whole thing, the whole speaker box, the whole patent pending. I don't know what I've noticed. We still have some grease pencil lining here, which is fine, but we'll just delete it because I'll forget. And that said, we can get rid of this empty real quick, or at least make sure that we can't select it and start to approximate the shape here. We'll do that by hitting period on the number pad and tab to go into edit mode, control R to add a loop cut. And we can um, select x-ray mode here, which would allow us to select this bottom, uh, these bottom edges or the bottom face. If we hit three on the number row at the top of the keyboard and select just this face and we can scale it. And I think this looks not at all like what we've just done. So we'll undo that and work it out with this one. Let's see. No, that doesn't quite look right. So let's just move these two. Nope, that still doesn't look quite right. So let's just move this one. Why is this not doing what I want it to do or behaving? Oh, grab. Let's do that. Grab with G. There we go. That looks a lot closer. We'll bring it down a bit. And there we go. We've got the shape. And it only took me six incorrect button presses to get there. These things happen. So the other detail that I pointed out, let's bring this closer. Uh, and let's bring the cursor back to world origin. Because I don't know about you, but I just I need to know my cursor is at the world origin. We will work on the inset next. What do I mean by that? Well, it seems like this bit of the line here is sticking out and that this is 
inset. Uh, and that's an operation that Blender makes really easy by selecting this cube, going into edit mode. Uh, let's not be in x-ray mode. We can select this face and by pressing I, we can inset it. And this allows us to then hit E to extrude and then bring that inset face in. So we've effectively now created this billboard and it's in a really like low effort way. Uh, but we'll, we'll get really detailed. It looks like there's one, two, three different layers of insetting here. Um, and the, uh, I'm seeing Eckhart Tolle saying, assigning different materials with basic colors always helps me envision the scene early on. This is true and we'll get to that definitely. Um, yesterday when we w when I was working on the scene, I essentially set everything to black, which didn't really help. But I think even if we go into view, uh, not viewport shade, uh, yep, viewport shading, because we're using this image. And um, nope, we'll add we'll add materials in a moment. But that's a good call, good shout. Thanks for that. So uh, I was saying we want to approximate the levels of insetting that we have here, just um, just to get it a little bit closer. So we'll do that. We'll inset once and make it just a bit thin, and then inset again, a little bit thicker than that. E to extrude, we'll extrude it into itself, if that's even a thing. And um, this looks good now. And just because I think this really helps visualize like what exactly is going on, especially for people who might be new to Blender or just don't use uh, these tools. If I add a light into this world and go into rendered mode, we can now see that um, this is actually creating some shadow so we went from having what was effectively a flat um, plane early on, or a cube, and now we're starting to give it shape and to approximate that uh, physical world uh, object. And so something I noticed just now was that we're not really seeing the levels of, yeah, extru uh, of, of insetting because I didn't really use them. So I'm just gonna go back and we're going to inset this inwards like that just a bit inset again to create some form of frame and then push it in just once more and now we'll, we start to see this sort of outline which I wanted because to some degree this kind of looks like that um, so that's that and this this piece here looks uh, similarly, uh, that's not what we want. Looks similarly um, misshaped. It looks like it looks like it's been through a lot, and we can approximate that shape the same way that we did the top version of it by contr uh, hitting Control R to create a loop cut, dropping that loop cut uh, that gets created there, selecting this edge, and m manipulating it. By which with whatever tool of choice, I'm using G here to grab it and to move it just to give it this somewhat uneven shape uh, because nothing is perfect. And that definitely uh, does not look perfect. And just to be thorough here, we're gonna add a cylinder for that base. We'll scale it down, scale it down even further. And uh, I actually didn't know how to do this until my friend Sharan showed me a couple of days ago. Uh, Shadan goes by just 3D things on YouTube and elsewhere, and I definitely recommend checking out their tutorials. But um, I asked, how the heck do I get this cylinder to actually look flush along the edges? And he delivered. Um, so if you use a subdivision surface modifier, which I didn't know at the time, again, and swap the levels in the viewport so it looks, uh, it approximates what we're working with tab to go into edit mode, control R, set a couple uh, loop cuts by uh, rolling the mouse wheel and drop them in place. It's, it's looking good, but it's not looking great and we want it to look great. So back into edit mode, we'll select this face and by hitting I, which we know insets and scaling just a bit uh, or insetting just a bit, we can actually get that nice smooth uh, edge along the top. I'm gonna right click and shade smooth just so we can see it. Um, we'll do the same here at the bottom just so that it looks the way we intend. 
And just to be very thorough, we'll uh, select this and go into the normals here in the object data properties and hit auto smooth so that the parts that are meant to be smooth are smooth and those that are meant to be flat are flat uh, in term as far as the normals go. So now back to this, um, Eckhart Troll brought up a great point in the chat of essentially, hey, Kev Bench is watching uh, on YouTube. This is making me want in and out. He says, Kev, thanks for tuning in. He says it's a bit louder on Twitch. Um, that's interesting. And it's not something that I know how to fix at the moment because um, I, I, I am using Streamlabs OBS to stream to both YouTube and Twitch at the same time. And I think it's taking the audio feed from both and using that, uh, or sorry, feeding the same audio feed to both. So I'm not sure what would make it louder in one than in the other, but I will look into that afterwards. Um, so with the thoughts of my current hunger in and out and White Castle in mind, let's push through. Um, Ecrotrope brought, brought up a great point, which is that this is all looking, it's looking good, right? But it's, it's all the same color right now. So let's fix that. Uh, but first, one thing that bothered me here, that is an easy fix. And you definitely always want to go for the easy wins if you can, is let's just give this, let's just give this some more shape so it's not super flat. I'm doing that by uh, hitting G, um, G to grab and then Y to lock my movements into the Y axis and then dragging it along that Y axis. For the following streams, I'll have screencast keys turned on because that's something that I complain to a lot of Blender uh, educators about and here I am not using it. So shame on me. All right, back to color and materials. We can start to assign materials to this. We'll go into the shading tab here in Blender or the shading workspace and go into look dev mode or uh, is that what it's called? I mean, I call it that, others call it that material preview is uh, I guess the technical name for that. And we will grab cube 007 and add a new material. We'll just call it metal. That sounds like an appropriate name. A to select all and um, period on the number pad to bring all the shaders or the, yeah, shader nodes into view. Um, Blender is a really powerful tool in that it just makes so much available to you from the jump, uh, but without overwhelming you. Nodes is something that can be extremely overwhelming uh, but I can't recommend just 3D things, Arendelle, XYZs, CG Matters, and Curtis Holtz and companies tutorials on nodes and the like enough. And if you want to have a really succinct way of finding all those names that I just mentioned, then there's only one thing that you have to remember, and that's Blender Nest. Nest, like a, like a bird's nest. Blender wow that looks awful blender and then nest i'll write it out here just so that you have the visual memory cue and so they are all um they are all on that podcast which you can find on youtube and yep that's a good source of blender education beyond me so that said um, I won't get too deep into what nodes are. I'm just gonna plow away at making this look a little bit more realistic. Now, something that uh, is pretty simple to do here, I'm sure, is to give all of these the same material. And if I don't, I actually don't remember how to do uh, copy attributes. I don't know if that's something that I need to enable. So I'm just gonna, because it's only a couple of them, I'm just going to assign them all the same material. And you know what? Somebody in the comments will say, this is how you're supposed to do that. And I will say, thank you for showing me the way. But look, we're done and uh, no one's dead. So it's great. And now here comes the fun part. And this is about where we closed off yesterday um, at around the same time frame so we're doing all right 
here's the fun part. Two things. One, we can select this object. Whoops, what's going on here? There we go. Select this object and select this face specifically and separate it by hitting P. So we've separated that selection. And now this will have its own attributes. Um, so we can remove the metal uh, material from it and give it a brand new one, which I'll do by hitting new and we'll assign it um, control L. What does that do? Control L, make links. Oh my God, yes, that's it, thank you. I think this is what object materials, yeah, amazing. Thanks Andromeda, lifesaver. All right, so we, um, it's a weekly Blender themed chat podcast on YouTube. Yes, it is, Blendernest. Say it again for the people in the back, Blendernest. This is where, it, it's a combination of so many of the great, um, oh, Kev says that the volume is really low, whoops. I'll have to figure that out. Sorry, Kev, join us on Twitch if you can. Um, but yeah, Blender Nest, it's a, it's a combination of all my favorite Blender educators um, that I learned from when I started learning Blender in September of 2019. And I started to take it seriously in January of 2020. So I've been at this for a little bit more, uh, a little bit over a year um, and making some cool stuff like this, ha ha ha. All right, so we're gonna hit Control T. I have Node Wrangler installed and that's gonna bring up all these nodes and you don't need to worry about what these are. Essentially, it's just giving us um, information about the object and its location and what we want to apply to it. And in this case, I want to apply the image of the speaker box and it's gonna populate that section that we just separated with a, um, with a part of the image uh, that we were using as reference, which still exists right here. So a part of that image. Um, this is starting to get a little cluttered, but that's fine. We are working through it. So I'll drag another workspace here real quick and make it the UV editor. I will click on that and bring up the speaker box. Hit U to, wait, what? Why is this not showing up? Edit mode, there we go. Go into edit mode, select that face hit U to unwrap, and now we'll get the sort of boxed representation of this face or the unwrapped version of this face on, um, on, oops, sorry, on this UV editor. So <clears throat> yeah, I'll select all and my voice is starting to go. And the goal here is actually to match up these, um, corners with the corners of the speaker box. So we'll, we'll start to move it in that direction. And then one by one using one on the keyboard, which will bring us to the vertex selection in the UV editor, we'll start to move them to align with those corners. And what that will do as you start to see here is that we'll um, start to drop it into the general location of this. But before we do that, if you've noticed, there's one tiny problem um, and it's that this is all on its side, so we're gonna rotate it on the y-axis 90 degrees, and that will uh, make this image texture show up right side up, which is what we want. So now we can start to drag these corners where they belong, everything in its right place. It's a great song by Radiohead. If you haven't heard it yet, what are you doing with your life? I'd like to incorporate music just as I do this um, to these streams in some way. And I haven't found the best way to do that. That doesn't involve me making a bunch of music. Speaking of me and music, uh, if you haven't checked out Andromeda Ladies uh, latest video on their YouTube channel, you definitely should um, because I made some banging music for that and the visuals are really fun and funky. Um, so definitely check those out. But yeah, I'll, I'll probably end up making a playlist that you can listen to as you watch or don't. Um, and yeah, so that's that. We've dropped those corners into this image and check that out with uh, some effort. 
we've managed to place that image onto this billboard here. And uh, not just that, but to make this image. So we'll take this one step further. We've got another uh, seven minutes here in the stream, so don't drop off just yet. Um, we will add some light. And I'll do that by hitting, uh, actually, I'm gonna inset this a bit and push it into itself by hitting E to extrude, which is one of uh, the favorite keys here in Blender world, E to extrude, S to scale. If you know Infenzia, you know that he loves uh, he loves that. I'm gonna hit uh, P to separate that selection. And now this will be its own thing. I'm gonna remove the metal material from it and just add a basic emissive material with the strength set to two. And um, not just that, but I'll also uh, shift and right click to bring my cursor up there and shift A to add a new light. And in this case, we're gonna use an area light and we're gonna scale the area light to approximate the scale of this, um, this light that we've just created here. Um, and obviously, or maybe obviously to me, this light is not flush, right? If we go here on the side view, um, this is, is uh, where's the D button here? This is inclined um, to some degree. So we want to imitate that by rotating it along the x-axis uh, just a bit. And we'll shrink it down. I want to get it as close as uh, you can just to be clean about it. Um, although I've heard mix, mix ideas as to just how exact you have to be with lights specifically. And uh, with that light selected, we want to give it some strength more than 10. Let's do 50. And let's give it a different color temperature. Let's make it warmer. So about 4,000 Kelvin. Uh, Andromeda Lady says, you need to announce when you're going to stream because I didn't know until I saw the purple status on Discord. Okay, yeah, I can definitely be better about that. This is stream one of, uh, of many. And uh, yeah, we'll just keep iterating and, and growing and getting better. So thank you for, for joining as soon as you saw that. The, that means a lot. Um, with that, uh, let's let's quickly, before we see what that light actually looks like, let's repeat that step onto this cheesy melty uh, sign. But if we look really closely, um, you'll notice that it's somewhat, uh, it's got like rounded edges here, and I wanna emulate that. And one quick way to do that with Blender is by actually grabbing it. And before we do that, let's scale it down to be about what I imagined the size actually was when I took the image, uh, took the photo. And, um, hit tab to go into edit mode and we'll just quickly control B or bevel tool our way to that shape. And that looks good. That's uh, actually, no, that does not look the, <laughs> the way I want it to look. And that's fine. So I'll roll my mouse button here to round the edges a little bit. And there we go. Now we've got the shape we want. We'll just make sure I am setting the normals here to act accordingly and auto smooth themselves. And, um, Let's make this just a bit thinner because it seems like it's like a sheet, a uh, thin sheet of, of some form of plastic or metal. Uh, so we want to sort of retain that property. And uh, similarly to what we did with this piece here, which if you remember, we gave it that photo or these several photos of um, the menu items here. We'll select it. We'll give it a new material. We'll hit Control T. We've got Node Wrangler, which is a an add-on that comes packaged with Blender enabled, and that allows us to quickly create these node groups. Which, if you uh, are just joining us, um, whoa, decoded. Hey, thanks for joining us. It looks like that because the scale hasn't been applied. Yeah, that's a good point. I haven't applied the scale for any of these things. Um, so, thanks for the tip and reminder. I'm gonna hit Control S to save. That's my reminder to save. Your reminder to stretch. If you haven't stretched. And I'm going to hit uh, Control A. Nope, that's not it. A to select all. And then Control A to apply the scale of all of them. And oh, yikes. This moved up quite a bit. Interesting. Um, yeah. Uh, Decoded VFX is joining us on Twitch is one of the educators on the Blender Nest podcast that I mentioned earlier. Um, and he's got some great tutorials on normals, which help me understand normals a bit better. Um, great tutorials on uh, 
uh, making cycles and EV um, and just you know tips and tips and tricks for making your renders faster as well and some other treasure troves on his podcast so I definitely recommend that you check those out it says here on my browser that twitch crashed I'm gonna cross my fingers and hope that's not the case refreshed and it wasn't the case we're back great uh, and thanks so much to friends and crew who are showing up for the stream I really appreciate it we're gonna go back to working on this material we'll name this cheesy wait what was the word cheesy melt delicious um, while I am, uh, I would say 90%, let's say 95% vegan, um, my diet has taken a turn for just plant-based because I honestly, I just can't let go of cheese. I'm, it's not something I'm proud of and I'm working on it. Uh, there are some incredible uh, cheese, um, non-cheese options that I can recommend, but that is maybe for another day because right now, we're trying to put this cheesy melt texture onto that object. We're gonna hit tab. Uh, we're gonna select uh, just the front faces. We just want the front faces here. Hit U to unwrap. And it's gonna screw it up because that's apparently not what we wanted. So we'll just do a cube projection. And that looks a lot better to me and to my eye. It also doesn't look rotated incorrectly, which is good. Um, so we're gonna scale it down and just start to bring it closer to here uh, which is where we want to source the image from and so I hope that you can start to see why this tool is just so fun to use because you know if you've got the right resources as with anything um, for learning how to use it you can just make just you start to make anything and it's it's a great tool for digital self-expression which is something that i'm really really uh excited and gung-ho about uh, just for lack of better terms all right so we're about an hour in and we've accomplished and achieved exactly what i wanted to do um, which is to approximate or recreate this speaker box this uh well it's not the speaker box itself but it is the billboard right next to it um, and now time for the big reveal of what it looks like rendered. There we go. It seems that like that light is just a little too strong. So we'll bring it down a bit, maybe let's say 20 watts. Um, and then we'll just add another light, like maybe a car headlight or something that is, uh, a little bit closer to it, shining, casting some light on it just so we can see some of the detail in the rest of the box. And uh, why am I doing this in the shading tab when I could be in this much cleaner view? So now we've gotten a view here of more or less, um, whoops, yeah, that doesn't look the way I thought it would, of uh, this billboard that we've created in just an hour. I mean, I don't know about you, but I couldn't do this a, a year ago um, and it didn't take me a year to figure out how to do it. This is one of the first um, sort of ways of uh, modeling that I um, started using when I um, was really early on in, in, in my Blender musings and usings. Uh, if we go into Cycles, which is a different render engine here in Blender, this will actually probably look a bit better and a maybe a bit more realistic than it does now. And if um, you know, we get really into the details, which we will in some of the future streams uh, on this piece and others of the way that we can use and leverage the materials and the shading editors within Blender to uh, approximate real world textures. Um, this can really start to look maybe even better than the real version that we're working with. And so I'm just gonna let my computer settle on here on cycles because it take it does take some time to render and I don't have any of the uh, settings that Decoded has so graciously um, shared with us in, in his tutorial series uh, to make cycles uh, run faster and just look better, uh, both in the viewport and the renders. But uh, we'll save here. Yeah, you start to get the idea of, of what's possible with this tool and uh, hopefully with why I'm so excited about it. So as this settles in, I wish I had some music to play us out. Unfortunately, I don't just yet.
but that's something that's coming. I'll uh, go back into Eevee, uh, which is that render engine that will help us um, navigate through the scene faster. <laughs> Eckhart Troll says, acapella will do. Maybe I'll, I'll sing something out um, as we close this off, but thanks for joining. Uh, I, I know that the majority of you that have joined know where to find me, uh, but if you don't, my name is Arturo, and my social media accounts are really easy to find. If you find one, basically, you can find all of them. Um, so this has been us. We've, we've created within an hour uh, just this one box. Most of it was me talking and fiddling through uh, my words and fumbling. But as we get these streams going, um, I, uh, it'll continue to be chatty, <laughs> but we'll, we'll get more done, promise. Uh, so next time which ah, let's just let's just put a date on it let's do it this saturday uh april what's this saturday april 10th at around the same time we'll work on the rest of the uh, speaker box um, specifically enough showcasing let's go back to the reference image here specifically this bit and uh, this nuggets, nuggets, nuggets um, sign that I honestly, it was probably 100% the reason why I took this photo um, because it kept flashing on and off. And so I think something that would be fun to do is to try to model um, this speaker box and this nuggets, nuggets, nuggets sign um, in such a way that it actually flashes nuggets, nuggets, nuggets. Um, and so I did take this photo, as I mentioned at the beginning, with my iPhone. And if you have an iPhone or you know someone who has an iPhone, then you know that um, iPhones capture actually a, a really short video with every image if you set it up that way. And so I have a video recording of this Nuggets, Nuggets, Nuggets sign flashing that I can show you at the beginning of the next podcast. Um, so that, or what? Next video stream? Or what am I? <laughs> next stream? so that um, you can get an idea of it before we actually make it happen. So with that said, I appreciate you joining. I appreciate you tuning in. I appreciate you commenting and following for those uh, that have along with this journey. Um, that's us. I'm gonna hit Control S here. That's my reminder to save, your reminder to drink water, stretch, hug a friend, hug yourself. That's it for me, folks. I'm going to end the stream, but thanks so much for hanging out.